Let's do another example. So here we can think we've got um, x cubed minus 5. And that's actually raised to a power. It's important to write it that way so that I can see that the outside function is square root function. I know I take the derivative of x to any power, so I'm good there. The inside function is this polynomial, right? Polynomials are made up of powers and constants, and so I know I take the derivative of that. So the derivative of the outside is 1 half x to the negative 1 half, because we have a constant power and a variable base. That makes it a power function. The derivative of the power function, the power comes down. You get the variable to 1 power less. So the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside is going to be 1 half x cubed minus 5 to the negative 1 half. What I've done is to plug in x cubed minus 5 here into the derivative. And of course, the derivative of the inside is 3x squared. Since the derivative of x cubed, the 3 comes down, you get x to 1 power less. And the derivative of this constant negative 5 is just 0. So according to the chain rule, the derivative should be the derivative of the outside, plug in the inside, multiply by the derivative of the inside. So we figured out that first piece is 1 half x cubed minus 5 to the negative 1 half. And then we have 3x squared. Now, if we wanted to, we could write this as a fraction. Upstairs, we've got 3x squared. Because this has a negative exponent, that's actually a, something to the 1 half power downstairs. And something to the 1 half power is a square root. So we've got this 2 down here. And then we've got the square root of x cubed minus 5, just another way of, of writing it. The important point is that we can use the chain rule to find that derivative. OK, one, one more example here. We've got uh, the cosine of x squared. Now remember, that's just shorthand for the cosine of x times itself. So we could think of the inside function as being cosine, and the outside function as being the function that squares things. I know the derivative of the inside is the negative sine of x. And the derivative of the outside is 2x. So the derivative of the outside with the inside plugged in, since the inside function is cosine, we're going to get 2 times the cosine of x. So h prime should be the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside times the derivative of the inside. Here we go. We figured out all these pieces. This is 2 times the cosine of x. And then the derivative of the inside is the minus sine of x. Now I'm multiplying, so I could multiply in any order. Think of this as negative 1 times the sine of x. I could take 2 times negative 1, which would give me negative 2. And then we have sine x cosine x. And we found the derivative of that function. Yep. There's kind of a pattern here that you'll notice arising. Anytime your composition is some function raised to a power, in other words, the outside function is a power function, then we know the derivative of the outside is going to be n times x to the n minus 1. So the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside, which is what the chain rule says to do, is going to be n times the inside to 1 power less. So if we, if we want to find the derivative of this composition, we can see we're going to get the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside times the derivative of the inside. It's a pattern that always holds true. So this is sometimes called the generalized power rule. Let's just do one more example. Let's say we've got, uh, we've got any function, maybe x cubed plus the cosine of x here raised to the seventh power. And we want to find the derivative of that with respect to x. Well, since the outside function is a power, what we do is the power comes down. We have our inside function raised to 1 power less. 1 less than 7 is 6. And then we just multiply by the derivative of what's inside. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And the derivative of cosine is minus sine. So we get 3x squared minus sine x. There's our derivative. 